brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're going to show you radiator replacement. This is a 2003 Honda Civic, but this is the same basically for 2001 to 2005 Civic and Acura EL with the four-cylinder engine. Items you'll need are a new radiator from 1AAuto.com, 10mm wrench or socket ratchet extensions, Phillips and flat plate screwdrivers, curved needle nose and standard pliers, drain pan and funnel, uh, additional antifreeze, and some penetrating oil. And there are four clips at the top to remove. Okay, at the front of the wheel well on each side, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here you need to remove. And again, this is on each side. Also on each side, you'll want to pull the wheel well down. Underneath, there should be a series of these push pins just like the top. Release each side by pulling firmly and then you may have to just pull a little bit and it'll come off. 10 millimeter wrench, loosen your negative battery cable first, pull it up and off and remove it. I've got a larger wrench to hold on to the bolt from this side and then Loosen it up and disconnect your positive cable second, pull it off, and just kind of push them down so they don't come back and hit the battery. 10 millimeter bolt to remove here, and then 10 millimeter nut here. And we're lucky enough, I did spray it down, but the way it was put together is actually just a hook at the bottom so you can unhook that and pull the retainer up and off. And then this little protective cover comes up and off as well. And now you can lift your battery up and out. Your drain is right under the center. It's actually a little hole right into this cover and you can see it right here. And we're just gonna use a little pair of pliers just to help us get that petcock going. And once you turn a little bit, just turn it out slowly. And obviously you don't wanna do this while the engine is hot. Once you get it draining, remove the radiator cap to allow air in and allow it to drain. Remove the rest of your battery retainer and there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding the reservoir right here. Remove the bolt with your socket and ratchet and extension. Lift it up and out and just unclip the hose as you go. Okay, it's just a little wire clip. Sometimes you can actually just use your fingers and pull it off towards the bottle. And then a pair of pliers will help you just break this hose loose. And then twist and pull it off. We're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt to remove the ground strap, get out of the way. Then use pliers to pinch the clamp, remove this hose to pull it up out of the way. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fan assembly, one here, and then one back over here. And then you wanna disconnect the connection as well. It's just a tab here to press. Sometimes you pull this, it should slide down and off, but press the connector and disconnect. 10 millimeter socket with a ratchet extension. pliers, squeeze the clamp, pull it back, twist the hose to break it free, pull it off. You may want to have a drip pan underneath just to make sure no coolant comes out, drips on the floor. And now we'll remove the two bolts that hold the fan. Hey 
anything that you can do to give yourself a little more space, which one thing is disconnect this coolant temperature sensor. It just has a tab on the side. Press the tab and we pull it off. I just hold the hose up out of the way. The fan pulls up and then you can slide it some to the side. You have to reach down and push your lower hose a little bit. It's just a kind of a matter of working it out. I'm going to remove the lower radiator hose from the engine. Pliers, pinch the clamp. Pull the clamp down and off. And usually you can twist the hose to break it free. It's good to have a drain pan underneath just in case any comes out, but no coolant should come out. Now we want to disconnect the transmission coolant lines here and here. And you definitely want a drain pan underneath for these. For these clamps, it's best to have curved pliers or a big set of needle nose pliers. I'm sure Honda has some special set of hose clamp pliers, but just squeeze, pull the clamp off. Same thing here. Go from the top. Squeeze, pull the clamp off. Grab a regular set of pliers. Make sure you can spin the hose a little bit, twist it free, and then pull them off. And again, have a drain pan underneath. Disconnect the left hand fan here. Just press on the top and pull out the connector. Now remove six 10 millimeter bolts two that hold the top of the fan in place, and the two bolts that hold the condenser, and the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator brackets. And just remove the brackets so they don't get lost. You want to remove this wire harness clip here. Use a small pair of pliers. Squeeze the teeth here and push it through. Now you can start to pull the fan up and out until you get to here. And there's another couple connectors that are clipped to the fan. For this larger one, press this clip here and then you should be able to pull it off. They're always rusty though, so they don't never really like to come off. And if you can't get those off the bracket, as in our case, the Phillips screw that holds the bracket on. Remove this little clip here to free that hose. Pliers. Squeeze. It should pull out. Pull the radiator. Pull your recovery hose out. This hose out. Start pulling the radiator up. You'll need to pull your transmission lines through. And just make sure it doesn't get caught on anything. manipulate your hoses so everything comes out. Remove the hoses, regular pliers for the main hose here. Pull it up and off. Again, long needle nose pliers, nice and big. Pull these clamps up and off. And note the position of these clamps is to the bottom, to the outside.
try and get uh, as much fluid out of the um, main tank as you can. You can just kind of block this one up and dump that into your coolant uh, drain pan. And then to get the transmission fluid out of these ones, just block your main tank and dump it out. You just get as much out as you can. Remove your upper radiator hose. And then just the overflow hose. Old radiator that we removed from the vehicle. New one from Morning Auto. Everything's the same. Remove the shipping protectors and we can install it. Get back on the road. Remove the cushions from the bottom of the old radiator. And just put them back into the mounting points in the frame. Replace the hoses. This guy goes here. and we'll take care of the upper ones once we have it installed. Okay, put your radiator down in, slide that hose down around the brace, and put these two down and in. And then just carefully lower your radiator hose, lower your radiator Try not to damage the fins. And then you can just kind of reach down, feel those pins and get them into the cushions. Start here, clip this hose in. And then the shorter hose goes to the passenger side. The longer hose goes to the driver's side. And then the main radiator hose. Sometimes you can get this clip to lock in place and then you just push up on the tab. And it locks. Take that protector off. Put your upper hose on. And reset the clip. Slide down a little bit. And grab our harness with the metal bracket and attempt to reinstall that. Reinstall this clip and then slide it down in. Make sure those tab, those posts at the bottom go into the holes. And then install your two mounting nuts. Tighten these up, 10 millimeter socket with a ratchet. And you can then reconnect your harness. Just put our overflow hose back on. 
and then our radiator top mounts. Now our condenser mounts. Tighten them all up. Two pegs on the bottom here go down into holes here. Pull the coolant hose up and your lead up and out of the way. Put your fan down in kind of diagonally. It's just a matter of you gotta push on the lower hose a little bit. And continue to feed it down in. And then this upper corner, you just have to get around the brace. So you to get this around, just move it out a little bit, a little bit of force, push it in behind, and then it kind of goes down in. Make sure this hose that goes to the coolant bottle is out of the way. And then you just have to kind of lift it up and try to feel for, you can kind of reach down there, feel one of the pegs, feel for the hole. and get it to slide down in place. And once you do that, the holes should line up pretty well with the holes in the radiator to mount. And you can connect the connector. And then this bolt goes in. And the other bolt goes in. And 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. And with an extension, just tighten them up. Plug in your coolant sensor. Put your hose back on. Reset the clamp. Put your ground strap back in place. You may not need to take off the ground strap, but ours was in kind of rough shape, so we didn't want to hurt it anymore. Put the clip in place hose down on. Again, a lot of times you can just use your fingers on this clip. Sometimes you might want to use a pair of pliers. Got to lower it down in place. Clip the hose in as you go. There. This one goes in there. And up here. There's a tab here on your bottle, and that tab goes down into a slot right here. And replace the 10 millimeter bolt. Battery. Place Get this down and in. The hook goes down and in. Reinstall your 10 millimeter bolt. Tighten it up. Reconnect your positive cable first and your negative cable. And tighten up. Bumper cover back in place. Make sure you go underneath the latch lever and end it up on the headlights. Yep. And then put these clips back in to hold it in place. Reinstall this 10 millimeter bolt on each side. Once the bolt's back up in, push your fender 
inner fender, or in this case, what's left of the inner fender, up and in. Okay, so there should be a bunch of clips in here, but they're all missing from this car, so we're gonna kinda put it back together the way it came apart, using some wire ties and just secure the bottom. Right, we are gonna refill the radiator directly first, and I like to recycle the coolant. Never, never as much comes out as you need to fill it anyways, so you generally can use your old coolant and then also augment it with fresh coolant. But if you put a piece of t-shirt in and then pour your old coolant in, that will filter most of the dirt out of it. it takes a little while to drain through the t-shirt, but it works. That's what we filtered out of the old coolant. And then we'll fill it up the rest of the way with good fresh coolant. If you want to use a 50-50 mix, you can buy coolant two ways. You can buy it full strength and you have to dilute it. And you can also buy it pre-mixed. We'll fill the radiator first and then we'll fill the overflow bottle. Fill it. And after you do a repair like this, good idea, fill it, run your car for a while, check the level, run your car for a while again, and just keep checking the level the first few times you drive the car. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, please visit 1AAuto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.